Okay. at all this stuff and then afterward I'll check the website all right second anniversary let's go okay we're starting with the gala okay this is definitely a light character it's definitely Zena oh shoot okay Probably, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to show. Oh. Oh. Unwavering aspect. Gala Zena. She is a light staff. Okay. So I excited. She has a shorter dress on. No more. No more pain traits. Starting. It's not for another five days. I guess it's for our anniversary itself. Makes sense. Dragalia Digest. Zephia's lending Zena her power, huh? Man, she's gonna be crazy burly. This is for sure a gala you won't want to miss. Hey, everybody, it's not. Can you believe it's been almost two years since our adventure started? <laughs> That's bananas. It has been no The game's serious. second anniversary is gonna bring a lot of changes. So I hope you don't like your socks because those babies are coming off. But first, All right, let's see what we got here. I've got a list of exciting announcements to share with you. So let's get this very special second anniversary Dragalia Digest started! Woohoo! First up. Okay. Time, Free Teddy Tenfolds. 33 days of free summons! 33 days! For what reason? Wow, so many. For what reason? Seriously, <laughs> you're not gonna wanna miss a single day of Dragalia Lost in October. <laughs> it's just every day of October. The campaign will be a Gala Dragalia, Presenting. featuring okay. every existing Gala adventurer and dragon. Oh, okay. but don't try to summon Gala Zena in it. She'll be coming later. Okay, so she's in her own. Next up, so that comes tomorrow, no, or that comes I at. Never uh, forget this. Not tomorrow, or the twenty, the twenty sixth. There's gonna be a second anniversary bonus. login bonus. Mini Hildy. Okay, that's oh, what they're calling her. You can get mini Warm Hildy print this second time. anniversary. So okay. Adorbs. I'm here oh, for it. And there's boatloads of other useful items too. So be sure to come and see your old pal not every day, okay? But wait, there's more. Thirty three days of free summons is ridiculous. We'll also be having an anniversary follow and retweet campaign. Yep. We're we'll randomly see ten gala adventures. The game's and official Twitter geez, account you just get and everything. Retweet a specific tweet. If everyone helps out, I know we can hit our target. Next up, you'll also be Yep, value packs. Alright, I predicted this, of course, because obviously they're gonna have value packs. These they always have value packs for these kind of things. For a limited time, so get them while they're hot. You can go see Nina for all the details. Diamantium pack. It's just straight up a uh, 10 star for my set of more. Some quests will cost half the usual stamina or drop more items. Triple jobs. Is this the perfect time to go adventuring or what? Oh, but we're not done yet. It's time to reset the social rewards yep. again. That's a sweet 2,500 Wormite just for playing co-op with new Pete. Let's go. There's also going to be a special anniversary raid event. And it's going to be set in Grastea a thousand years ago? Okay. 
That's cool. It's a gun. It's gonna be the gun. Okay. Okay. Another trial to Elysium protect. Okay. I don't know how to pronounce that. Time I'm reclaiming the bond that people with dragons have in ages past. Would grant power need to stand against the other? Okay. But the other's already dead. So why do I care? Oh, shoot. Never mind. Maybe he's not dead. Oh. Oh. Okay. Religion. Illa, founder of the Ilian Church. Whoa, that's crazy. Midgard Stormer. Crazy Midgard Stormer. Okay. Elysium. Okay. How many of these characters are going to be summonable, though? All of them? Question mark? So I guess you're playing a Zethia. Okay. Strength to take it up. Okay. This is cool. This is cool the angle that they're taking with that. I didn't expect them to go into the past. This looks like a Shadowverse character. <laughs> Both past and present. For those who make a bold choice. Maybe you can fail the event? Whoa. Okay. This looks super cool for Dragalia's graphics. This must be the new graphics. Forgotten Truths. Interesting that the fairies in it are more. Terrible mistake I have made. Okay. Oh, okay. I have so many questions right now. Five days away. Oh. But it looks like you'll also learn a lot about stuff in the present day Alberia, which is awesome! So they're on the gala, of course. So two of them are on the gala. Mine and the Midgard Stormer from the event will be appearing Midgard in the same Zero. Zero. Okay. As Zena. Okay, so you then. Can recruit them too. Okay, just a little more. Here's some info on version 2.0. 2.0. Let's see what we got here. Dragalia last celebrates its second anniversary with a major update. Version uh, 2.0. Okay, version 2.0. Which brings a number of enhancements. Announcing graphical changes for version 2.0. First up, the 3D models for adventurers and dragons are getting a fresh new look. Kinda looks it's better. It's like the illustrations popped right off the page. Here. There and everywhere. Look forward to seeing your favorite adventurers and okay. dragons as you've never seen them before. This was leaked though. It was it was leaked by them though. So changes to the summoning system. For All right, let's see what is this. The summoning system is being updated. You can get items called worm sigils when summoning. Once you collect a certain amount of these worms, <gasps> from sparking! The summer, you can redeem them to get an eligible adventurer or dragon from that event. Sparking! They put sparking in the game. Okay, that's huge. Worm sigils that expire will turn into worm sigil remnants, which can be exchanged for various items. Okay, that's super cool. Wow, that's like super sparking. Announcing weapon system changes for version 2.0. The weapon and crafting systems are being updated. Oh, the weapon line gun. Will be streamlined so that it's There's a gun there. Hello? Once they just going to show the gun weapon, icon and not talk about it. Okay, cool. Cool. The number of times that the same weapon can be equipped by members of your team. Okay. Upgrade weapons to unlock a weapon bonus that improves adventurers who wield that type of weapon. Some players may find the current void weapon abilities to be complex, but in the new system, simply upgrading a void weapon until it gains an ability will give its abilities effects to all weapons of the same type. Okay. 
These changes will be implemented after the second anniversary maintenance. Okay, that's already done. Please note that some weapons or features may be removed with the changes to the weapon crafting system. As a goodwill gesture, items, weapon mm -hmm. skins, converted weapons, and replacement weapons will be provided. Okay. Pretty condensed version of going over everything. That it took me 26 2. minutes to go over that entire change, so... Each worm print will be changed to feature a I guess this is part this was part of the 26 minute video to too so makes sense to a weapon. What's more I'm you'll here be for able it though to equip multiple worm prints with the same affinity to activate an affinity bonus bum, 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 bum. Keep this in mind when mixing and matching sword boot increase prints. okay that's crazy these changes will be implemented after the second anniversary maintenance yep. alongside the okay, so, system change. so they should be live right now I'm not playing the game yet but they should be live right now Announcing Adventurer and Dragon Balance Oh boy, here we 2. go. Okay. Over 150 adventurers and dragons will be made stronger. Okay. Whoa. These adjustments will make it easier to take on various quests with your okay. favorite adventurers and dragons. That's cool. 150. Announcing separate difficulties and rewards for solo and co-op play in version 2.0. Okay, that's huge. Difficulty levels and rewards for high difficulty quests like Advanced Dragon Trials and the Agito Uprising will be separated between solo and co-op play. Interesting. Difficulty levels will be adjusted alongside the Adventurer and Dragon Balance adjustments mentioned earlier. Although you'll get more item rewards from co-op play, the same types of rewards will be available from solo play as well. Intra okay, so incentive to play co-op. separation of difficulty levels between solo and co-op play, the mentor bonus feature will be removed. Yep. That makes sense. <laughs> that was Announcing super toxic. A new weapon type in version 2.0, the mana caster. Okay, this would have been... A new weapon yeah, type, this was the leaked, mana though. caster, will be added. Mana casters have three styles. Who's that guy? One that specializes in long-range attacks, one that specializes in close-range attacks, and one that unleashes a rapid fire barrage with a force strike. Okay, so they have force strike. Different styles are available to different adventurers. Huh, okay. To celebrate the release of the mana caster, all players will receive the mana caster toting three star adventurer Joe as a gift. Three star Joe. Of course it's Joe. Of course it's Joe. They know what they're doing. <laughs> will be added over time through summoning events and more. Of course. Okay, so I guess we have him right now. Announcing. High difficulty content in version 2.0. All right, let's see what this is. High difficulty content is on the way in version 2.0 and beyond. Sales Wrath Master, Master, Master. Master difficulty okay. quests for the Agito Uprising are launching one after another. Master difficulty quests for Ciela, Ayaha, and Otoha, and Tartarus will be added. Do you have what it takes to defeat them all? They're all be adding by November. If that's not enough, at the end of November, an even tougher difficulty level oh, will be released. Oh, boy. So prepare yourself for the toughest Agito Uprising challenge yet. <sighs> Agito to Nightmare. these enemies to make your six-star weapons look even cooler. Is that what you get as a skin? Yeah. Yep, that's new probably what you get as a skin. to follow the Agito Uprising are currently in development. Look forward to learning more in the future. Okay. That's pretty... Announcing the Iberian Battle Royale okay. version 2.0. What the hell is this? Season zero? Oh the no. Iberian Battle Royale is a new way to play. Up to 16 players will battle for survival in a duel to the death in this Battle Royale mode. <gasps> in the Iberian Battle Royale, you will upgrade adventurers over the course Bruh. of the battle. Their stats outside of this mode are not taken into account. So it is PvP. But it's PvP in a natural smart sense. Types, each with its Wait, own is fighting it style. This is something that's never been attempted in Dragalia Lost before. After this version 2.0 introduction video, we'll show a video that provides more detail on the Iberian Battle Royale, including okay. some gameplay. Announcing how to play Dragalia Lost in version 2.0. So how do you go about exploring the brave new world of Dragalia Lost version 2.0? Let's take a look at one way to advance through the game. First, Tackle the main campaign to unlock okay. various other quests. This is all basic information right now. Dragalia Lost features an engrossing story, and it has 15 chapters so far. Next, clear elemental ruins and dragon trials to help make your adventurers and dragons stronger. Clearing the Imperial Onslaught is vital to ensuring the healthy development of the many facilities on your castle grounds. As you advance through the game, 
you'll obtain materials that can be used to craft weapons. Once your team is strong enough, test your metal in void battles. It would be wise to craft the exceedingly strong Chimera Tech weapons after you've defeated bosses and upgraded your weapons. Bro, I'm about to skip this. Well, actually, I don't and know. Don't I'm gonna watch it for to now. participate in various events. Okay, what is that? Is that? There's always something to keep you busy. Is that the same map? Lost. Whether it's raid events that give you a chance to add an adventure to your roster, it must be, it must just be facility from a different events angle. that provide a way to improve adventure elements and weapon types, or onslaught and defensive battle events that provide materials that you can use to unlock shared skills. If you have some spare time after all that, the event compendium keeps records of past events that you can play at your convenience. Okay. Now you're ready to take on high difficulty quests. Work through advanced dragon trials and the Agito Uprising quest. This is just as a pretty decent overview of the entire game as a whole. So, and yeah. of course, join 15 others in the multiplayer melee that is the Alberian Battle Royale when version 2.0 releases. Get yeah. ready to experience Dragalia Lost as you never had before. I don't know how I feel about PvP. That's kind of rough. But if it's if it's all mode dependent, Holy then cow, it probably won't this be too bad. So Okay. Story trailer. Hmm. Leonidas. Okay, new offer for Leonidas. Nedrick, okay. Ooh, what is that? Is that a new map? Who is that? Who the hell is that? Yo, that's a cool map. Not? Hello? City of Grams, the forest of the fairies. Okay, so people predicted that in the first place because the fairies were from the North Caesarea in the first place. Hello, I'm Yuji Okada. <laughs> Director of the this man is always game. memeing. Thank you for playing. This man is just a meme in himself. It's unfortunate. You just got a look at chapters 16 through 18 of the main campaign, which will be added by the two and a half year anniversary. We're only like, we have still 10 minutes left. The second anniversary raid event is connected to the main campaign too. So I hope you're looking forward to that as well. As previously mentioned, Dragalia Lost will be updated to version 2.0 for the second anniversary. Mm -hmm. We're planning a lot of new features and balance adjustments, so I'd like to explain a few of them while looking at some gameplay. But before that, allow me to apologize for the delay in adding the encyclopedia feature oh. that was mentioned during the one and a half year anniversary. Is it coming today? Development of the encyclopedia feature is in full swing, so I'll be sure to let you know when we expect it to be implemented. Yeah, it ain't coming. It's never coming. <laughs> now, let's take a look at some gameplay and discuss the updates. Okay. First, you'll see that the 3D models have a fresh new appearance. We've changed how we are coloring the 3D models, giving them an outline in order to bring their appearances closer to their illustrations. Makes sense. Next, I'll introduce some of the adjusted features. We've changed how players approach weapon craft. Put simply, the focus is now on gradually unlocking the power of weapons rather than obtaining or crafting them. Makes sense. So Until I wonder what's going to happen when I log into the game. Obtain, craft, and enhance a lot of different weapons. But after careful consideration, we've changed this system so that the powers of crafted weapons are unlocked progressively using various items and materials. 
Also, unbinding can now be performed on the same screen. As you unlock a particular weapon's powers, you can increase the number of different adventurers who can equip it. Makes sense. As you upgrade weapons, you'll unlock weapon bonuses that boost the stats for all weapons of the same type. Each unlock provides just a small boost, but they can quickly add up. So aim to unlock all of the bonuses. Until now, players have chosen from various weapons and their corresponding abilities, based on the enemies they'd be fighting. But after this update, once an ability has been unlocked, it will be treated as a weapon ability and be applied to all weapons of that type at all times. Yep. Okay. I already know this though. That was, that was detailed weapons yesterday. used to have various abilities, but as their numbers increased, so did the system's complexity. To summarize, by crafting and improving all of the weapons, you can gain the benefit of weapon bonuses and weapon abilities. I hope you'll aim to make powerful weapons like the High Dragon and Agito weapons. Okay. Let's take a look at Wormprints next. Wormprints will now be equipped to weapons rather than adventurers. Also, Currently, a single worm print may come with multiple abilities. In order to give players more flexibility in how they outfit their teams, we're changing the system so that worm prints come with just a single ability, but up to five of them can be equipped to a particular weapon at a time, depending on its rarity. Mm -hmm. They already talked about this, though, again. But so they're, they're repeating a lot of information. To equip a worm print on a particular weapon I, guess, I guess it makes sense, though, because of how massive the update is. Furthermore, certain worm prints will have an affinity, and equipping a certain number of them will grant additional ability effects, called affinity bonuses. Be sure to keep that in mind as you select which worm prints to equip. As a result of these feature changes, players will receive several items as a goodwill gesture. We'll share more information in a future notification, so stay tuned. Moving on, with this update, we've split high difficulty quests like the Advanced Dragon Trials and the Agito Uprising into solo and co-op quests in terms of game balance and rewards. Okay, there's five this weekly bonuses. This is the current balance creates a high barrier to entry for playing in co-op, while the difficulty level makes taking them on solo too hard. The quests are split as seen here, and those undertaken in co-op will yield slightly more rewards. Makes sense. Well, they're reducing the stamina cost. We've made some overall adjustments to the content of these battles for solo play, but they're not major changes. If you were considering taking on these quests, or have been struggling to clear them, you may want to test your strategies in solo play first. Okay. I wonder how Along weak they with are. these adjustments, we've also removed the mental bonus system. Next, we'll add a new weapon type called Mana Casters. Interesting. Okay, so sides, one that specializes in long range attacks, one that specializes in close range attacks, and one that unleashes a rapid fire barrage with a force strike. Hmm. The second one of these can be used in the upcoming Battle Royale mode, which I'll talk about next. Very interesting the way that they're dealing with this whole thing. Different adventurers use different styles, and we'll add new mana caster wielding adventurers to future summon showcases over time. Finally, I'd like to talk about the brand new mode. Oh, it's a special event. Battle Royale. Okay. Here, up to 16 players will compete to be the last one standing. Players may choose one weapon from a group of up to nine. The stats of your adventurers and dragons outside of this mode are not taken into account when playing, so you'll be relying instead on the various skills and actions provided by your chosen weapon. Okay, I like that a lot then. That's perfect, because it gives no one a direct advantage in Agawa. Setting. The weapon you choose determines which adventurer you can play with, so you'll have to first choose a weapon when starting out. Players will be placed in random locations across the map at the start of the quest. That's so cool, the way that they're doing This is like the roguelike when people were asking for. 
but everything other than weapon skills have a limited number of uses. Pick up a whetstone to level up and boost your adventurer's HP and strength. <laughs> Items are hidden all over the place, so leave no stone unturned. This is actually pretty cool. Goblins are also scattered across the map. They'll cough up items if you defeat them. Okay, defeat enemies, but you also are defeating other players, aren't you? A miasma that surrounds the arena prevents you from wandering too far from the action. Hey, you're searching fill the map over time and damage you if you stray into it, so be sure to keep an eye on its progress with the mini map. Huh? You can also shapeshift, and for this upcoming battle, all adventurers will shapeshift into Midgard Zorba. Okay, he killed that guy. A manticore may appear as your plane. Defeat this tough enemy for a bounty of items. Okay, get a bunch of items from him. Use your skills and shapeshifting wisely. Dang, that guy beat him and then he just took all the loot. That's crazy. <laughs> now, I bet you're curious about the nine weapons, right? The sword starts off with an attack skill and is pretty easy to use. Okay, sword has attack. The bow packs a powerful force strike. Interesting. The axe slows you down, but its skill performs a powerful attack on enemies in front of you. Sword still can best out of make you invisible to your enemies for a certain <laughs> amount of time. What? The staff provides healing to help survive longer skirmishes. Huh. The mana caster is stronger at close range, but the wielders have low HP, so they must choose their battles wisely. You have a shotgun. There's a weapon for every kind of player, so I hope you can find a favorite. Players will start with three weapons to choose from, and unlock the remaining six with items obtained by playing Battle Royale matches. The Alberian Battle Royale will like be available two or three to play minutes. any time until late October. We'll be okay. keeping a close eye on how players are enjoying this mode, and we'll expand or add features and make balance adjustments hmm. as necessary. Are there rewards for it? We'll provide information on the update content and release time of what I talked about today via the in-game notifications. It isn't a lot now, for sure. I just want more in store that I couldn't cover today, so stay tuned. Now, let's take a look at what we have planned for the future. Alright, here we go. First, you'll be able to add a visual oh, wait, no. to your stick star weapons by upgrading them with materials dropped when clearing the new difficulty level for the Agito Uprising. Doing so will also increase the weapon's stats slightly. Okay, so it's a little stat increase. This new difficulty level will pit you against a rebalanced Agito Uprising designed for those who enjoy pushing their limits. Okay. Next, we plan to host another time attack event. But this time, we'll balance it so that a greater number of players have a chance to clear it. Oh, I don't like this at all. <laughs> time attack was not good. New bosses are also in development, so I hope you're ready to fight some new foes. Oh god. There's a lot more event and update news to cover, so I hope you look forward to learning more in upcoming in-game notifications and this month in Dragalia Lost. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to go hard on the, uh, time attack. <laughs> Finally, I'll be able to share some brand new information with you in early November, so look forward to that, too. Thanks for tuning in until the end. Version 2.0 and its various updates will be released after the maintenance. I hope this video has given you plenty of reasons to be excited oh. about Dragalia Lost. Oh, no crossover? Dang, there's no crossover announced. That's crazy. Okay, maybe we'll see a we'll probably see a crossover then on the I'm gonna close this. We'll probably see a crossover again on this weekend then, because there is another presentation this weekend. Uh, I'm gonna quickly go over to this website here. Let's see what we have here. We have Joe. <laughs> I'm missing the website. Uh, completely updated. Yeah, it did. Okay. Version update 2.0. Gone Dragalia. The Agito Uprising. They haven't talked about the second anniversary rate event yet. This is all still coming soon. But half of the page is just immediately full. 
Cool. Okay. Well, I think I'm going to wind down the stream. I've been alive for like oh, uh, an hour and a half now. Thank you all so much for coming out. Thank you all so much for watching. And I will see you guys next time.